the biggest game of the weekend. Arguably going to be the biggest game of the college football season. You have a, a game that goes by one title, and that is the game. Capital T, capital G, 12 Eastern, Fox, in the big house. Ann Arbor, Michigan, you got Ohio State at Michigan. It'll be a Michigan three and a half point favorite. This one is extremely personal. Extremely personal for both sides. All of the drama going on off the field with Jim Harbaugh being suspended and accepting that suspension, the Connor Stallion stuff with the sign stealing and Ryan Day and the talk about being born on third base from last year. Like, this has all the drama you could want baked into it. And finally, we're going to get to see these teams settle it on the field. Really quickly, make sure you're subscribed because we talk college football and only college football. Going to talk a lot about this game leading up to it. Going to talk a lot about both these teams after the fact. So make sure you're dialed in so you don't miss a minute of what we got going on right here on the On3 YouTube channel on this show, The Hard Count. Also, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Judy Pacal. Get at me. I mean, DM me, tweet me. Let me know who you have winning this game. All right, so we appreciate y'all in advance for that. Michigan, they've had this us against the world mentality really since before the season with the whole thing with Jim Harbaugh having the self-imposed suspension, and they're throwing up the fours before a snap, lining up in the Harbaugh formation. Like, they've kind of had this edge, this chip on their shoulder. Uh, this is the chance for them to really, like, put it, put out the silencer, if you will. Because everything led up to this game. It's been, well, the Penn State game is nice, and that's, you know, a good opponent, but they're no Ohio State. Well, they've been dominant, that's nice, but it's, it's not the game. Like, we're really going to see what they're made of when it comes to the game. If they beat Ohio State... They can eliminate all the talk by winning their third in a row over the Buckeyes and doing it at the crib and likely setting themselves up for another Big Ten championship and another college football playoff berth. At that point, you can kind of just sit there and say, how do you like me now? You can say that if you're Michigan, you can kind of just sit there and say you had all this to say. There was all this talk about us, what we were, what we weren't, sign stealing, being credited for our success the last couple of years. How do you like us now? That would be what you can say. Now, do they get to say it? Ohio State, uh, they're going to have their own take on this game for sure because as much talk as there's, as there's been about Michigan, there's been just as much about Ohio State. We had Ryan Day on this show in the offseason, and he told us, man, like, hey, we don't, we don't have to talk about expectations here. We don't have to talk about the standard here at Ohio State. It is unique to any other place across the country. It is beat your rival, which they are planning to do this upcoming weekend, and go win the Big Ten and go play for a national championship. Go win a national championship. Like the standard, the bar is enormously high. And Ryan Day and company, the last two years, they have fallen short of that. Now, a lot of teams would give their left arm to achieve what Ohio State has achieved over the last couple of seasons with making the college football playoff and different things of that nature. But they understand like that the bar is, again, set at a different place in Columbus, Ohio. So... With all that's been said about Ryan Day being on third base and going 0-2 the last two years, like everything they've done since last year's game has been leading up to this year's game. They've kind of taken a good look in the mirror, reinvented themselves, I think kind of recreated who they believe they are from an identity standpoint. And who they are from an identity standpoint is they, they have embraced the, the villain role. They've embraced that team that's going to play up front in the line of scrimmage. They're that team that's down to win an ugly kind of game and not score 40 points a game if they have to. Now, they'll take 40 in this game if they can get it, but uh, this, is, this is their chance to get it all back and then some for Ohio State. So what's it going to come down to? I mean, I think for starters, the efficacy of Marvin Harrison Jr., y'all, like the over-under on hearing Maserati Marv from Gus Johnson calling this game, the over has to be somewhere around like nine and a half. I'm taking the over on that for the record. Uh, there's, there's no mistaking his impact to this team, to this offense. A third of Kyle McCord's yards passing are to Marvin Harrison Jr. Over half of Kyle McCord's passing touchdowns are to Marvin Harrison Jr. Pretty straightforward. They're going to try to get the ball to 18. And just so we're on the same page, like he has that takeover factor. We were there in Columbus when they played Penn State, and the rosters were, were even to a degree. Like, they went back and forth for a while. It was close for the majority of three quarters. And then at some point in time, they were like, you know what? We have an Avenger playing receiver for us. We're going to feed him the football, and he's going to get after it. And that was the difference in the game. When, when the hands are even, when the cards that you have are even, I think the cards are fairly even in this game, he can be your takeover guy for you. So is he that for Ohio State in this game? It remains, remains to be seen. Because for Michigan, I don't think the task is to just totally hold him at bay. I don't think it's a thing where you just take away Marvin Harrison Jr. completely out of the game and we look at the box score and say, wow, he only had 30 yards receiving. 
wow, the, the secondary of Michigan with as talented as they are with Will Johnson and Mike Sandra still like, I still think that for Michigan, it's going to be a lot of just not letting 18 beat you. Because I think he's going to get his. He's too talented for him to not have some kind of impact on this game. But does he have the takeover impact on this game? That's really what has to be crucial for Michigan. Because a factor within that now is Kyle McCord playing clean. We had Spencer Holbrook from Letterman Row on this platform yesterday. I guess that video dropped this morning. And he echoed this same sentiment. He's like, Kyle McCord does not need to go for 400 yards passing. He just needs to be efficient, right around 65% completion percentage, and not turn the ball over. So all that's to say, Marvin Harrison Jr., he can get his 100 yards. But if you play well enough on the back end and you turn Kyle McCord over twice, well then, hey, maybe we have a different you know, situation than what we would like it for an Ohio State fan. So that's a big part of this. The efficacy of Marvin Harrison Jr. obviously will have a major impact on this football game. Now, here's my question. Last couple of years for Michigan, the way that they've dominated this football game has been up front on the offensive line. What is the margin of edge for them on the offensive line? Because they feel like they got seven NFL guys in that offensive line room. Back-to-back Joe Moore award-winning offensive lines. Best in the country the last two years. Is the edge this year as great as it has been in the past? Because if it is, like, that's just the mic drop for them. Like Taylor Swift after having some movie popcorn. Mic drop, right out of the hand. They ran for 200 yards, or more than 200 yards last year, and that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. If Ohio State can close that gap, or heck, let's say neutralize that gap, well, then you put the game on J.J. McCarthy. And I don't think it's a matter of, well, you put the game on J.J. McCarthy, and by that way, you just win the football game if you're Ohio State, but you play more into the kind of style of game you would like it to be. And I think for Ohio State, too, it's about sustaining. And we've seen the last couple of years in this very spot, especially last year, really. Like, we were were at that game. And Ohio State, for the first half, I believe they held Michigan to somewhere in the range of, like, 20 to 30 yards rushing. Like, they were holding them down up front. But then in that third quarter, in that fourth quarter, that heavy weight of Michigan, eventually the dam broke. The, the weight became too heavy for Ohio State, and Michigan ended up hitting home runs and won the game that way, and you saw the box score be what it was. So sustaining in that second half, going the distance, is going to be crucial for Ohio State in this spot. And I mean, if they can do it, obviously, again, goes back to J.J. McCarthy. I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm saying for Ohio State, you want to make him prove it, that he can do it. Because that's kind of the, what I think this whole thing comes down to. Who can throw the best counterpunch? And what I mean by that is when we take away your identity, Whether we're Michigan or we're Ohio State, we take away what you do best. How do you answer to that? What what is the counterpunch when we take away your right hook? I think for Michigan, it's pretty straightforward. What we just said a second ago, I think it's J.J. McCarthy. Because the evolution for Ohio State this past offseason has been we got to get better up front, across the board defensively, take away big plays, but especially better up front, stopping those gash run plays that Michigan had last year. And take that away. Now, for Michigan, that same evolution has been going on, but it's been on the offensive side of the ball and saying, okay, can we win in more multiple ways? Can we be a team that's going to stretch the ball downfield? Clearly, that goes back to the number nine. That goes back to J.J. McCarthy being able to push the ball downfield and deliver in the mail. If he's able to be effective downfield, well, then at that point, I think you're out of luck if you're Ohio State. Because you can sell out to stop the run, But if we can push the ball downfield for Michigan and you have to honor that and you have to keep that box a little bit lighter, then it plays into our strength if we're Michigan and we like our offensive line to beat your defensive line. I'm telling you, that's the matchup they feel comfortable in. And J.J. McCarthy adding balance to that is how they would win. Now, for Ohio State, I think their counterpunch is Travion Henderson. And Travion Henderson did not play in this game last year. And the reason why I think he's so critical in this game is I think he's the other level of explosives that Ohio State offense might need in this game. And on top of that, they might need some control in this game, running the football. And Emeka Ibuka obviously has to have an impact on this game as well as he's continued to get more and more healthy, it sounds like, and kind of be the counter to Marvin Harrison Jr. in the past game. But like, I think there may be a point here for Ohio State where they need to take take, take the air out of the game and hold the ball with four minutes left. And Trayvon Henderson... Not that he's necessarily like your workhorse back that you're just going to, you know, run power right, power left over and over again and just be the the bulldozer for you. But I think what he brings, especially getting out on the edge against Michigan, stretching that defense, making them feel concerned about what they can do in the run game. Heck, checking it down to him. 
turning four yards into 40 yards. Like, that's the kind of explosivity he has. And again, I think Ohio State, they may need that to put some pressure on Michigan. Because if you can score with Marvin Harrison Jr., you can score with Travian Henderson, and Kyle McCord plays clean, and we see Ohio State get out to a 14-0 lead. Well, at that point, Michigan's offense is explosive enough, I think, to recover from that. But just to be clear, that's not a situation we've seen them in before. Also, I don't think that's something they're quite as comfortable doing. They want to play with the lead. They want to force the issue against Ohio State. So Trevor Henderson helping set that pace for Ohio State, I think he is the counterpunch here if you try and take away Marvin Harrison Jr. in that pass game. So we picked a lot of Ohio State games this year. Picked a lot of them. Full transparency, we've been wrong a fair amount about Ohio State, especially after the Penn State game. I, I came in here on Sunday morning. I said, we need to apologize to the good folks in Columbus because quite frankly, we were wrong. And when we're wrong, we say we're wrong, we talk about it. And for Ohio State now, they've built to a game like this. They have. There's no way around it. They've, they've built to a game like this. I, I cannot tell you, I cannot adequately put into words the sadness that was in the shoe last year when they lost to Michigan. Because last year was supposed to be the year with C.J. Stroud and all that they had done leading up to that game and how potent they were offensively and, and, and getting back what was theirs from when they lost in an Arbor the year before. And now... It's like, okay, we're 0 for 2 the last time. We're not going 0 for 3. That's the feeling in Columbus. Now, I'll also say this. After we gave our apology for the Penn State miss, there was a lot of Ohio State fans that were like, hey, stay on that side. Stay on that side. And again, this is, we love Ohio State. Like, we've been to Ohio State more than anywhere else when it comes to this show going places, and we love it every single time. It is a special place. Now, with that being said, I think there is more ways for Michigan to win this game. I think the physicality of Michigan is going to be able to lean on Ohio State. I don't think it's a blowout like we saw the last couple of seasons. But at the end of the day, I do think Michigan keeps on telling us who they are. I think that letdown last week could end up providing more urgency this week. I like Michigan to win by a field goal. I think it's 27-24 Wolverines. I could see it going either way. So Ohio State fans, this is, I mean, hey, we love y'all, man. We love y'all. We're picking Michigan to win this game. It's nothing personal. And if I'm an Ohio State fan, I'm probably glad to see that I picked Michigan because we've been wrong about Ohio State so frequently. So we're picking Michigan to win this game. And I think at that point in time, you turn the volume down on all the talk around Connor Stallions and that's why they were good. And this is that about Harbaugh and like all, all the nonsense that's been said about Michigan the last couple of weeks. You just say, okay, now what? Now what? Is it still about sign stealing? Is it still about, you know, us cheating to win games? I'm not saying Michigan to cheat. I'm saying I think that was overblown the last couple of weeks. And this is the game where all of that sort of just gets thrown by the wayside. And we say, okay, actually, Michigan is really, really good. And now for Ryan Day, we didn't really touch on this too much. But like, if they lose without Jim Harbaugh on the sideline, it's kind of a lose-lose. If there's no Jim Harbaugh on the sideline and they lose this game, there is going to be so much noise around Ryan Day going 0 for 3. And I mean, in the last three years, that is, and, and about what he hasn't been able to do at Ohio State and him not being the right guy. Like, let's not listen to the, all the Ryan Day hot seat talk if they do lose this game. Ryan Day is a phenomenal head coach, is the right guy at Ohio State, very, very clearly. But I'm just saying it's going to get loud if they lose this game. So the lose loses, if you lose with Sharon Moore on the sideline, what are we doing? We lost without Jim Harbaugh there? If you beat Sharon Moore, it's like, well, yeah, but Jim Harbaugh wasn't on the sideline. So does it really count? So it's it's a lose-lose in that sense. But I think if Ohio State goes against what we're saying right now and they just blow Michigan out of the water, at that point, it's like, hey, there was no doubt. It didn't matter if Harbaugh was on the sideline or not. So that's our pick for this one. Cannot wait to watch a game of the year. And it's going to be it's gonna be a scene. It will be college football at its best. Michigan, Ohio State. Noon Eastern, Fox, the game at the big house will not disappoint. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.